perfect. It just started it now. Uh, good evening, folks. Uh, again, my name is Miguel Ravellis. Um, currently the now the offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach here at University of Laverne. Um, prior to my time, like Coach said, uh, I was at University of Cal Berkeley for a year and a half. Prior to that, I was at University of Arizona for four and a half years. Um, then prior to that, I was at Azusa Pacific for a year um, and, a, and some few months, um, which is a D2 school in Southern California. Matter of fact, it's the only D2 school now currently in California since Humboldt State uh, has now closed down. Um, again, I'm going to go through uh, punt return, um, kind of our philosophy. This is A lot of this philosophy is what we did at, at Cal when I was there. Obviously, some things have changed over the time, about two years. Um, he's changed a little bit here and there. But again, this is kind of the philosophy that we inputted, you know, our, our first year there at Cal. Um, and we, ha we had a good, uh, a good group of guys w willing to work hard. Um, you know, we were still kind of transitioning through the roster, um, trying to find the guys uh, uh, who can play on special teams and who couldn't. Um, so the, the tools and the stuff you'll see, Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I told Coach we can stop at any time and I can answer any questions you may have um, or we can save them for, you know, after, after the, uh, the video and stuff. But, again, I'm going to go through it pretty slow so you guys can have, have uh, at it and, and see kind of the tools that we used and compiled. Um, so just so you understand, this is literally a, a, just a middle return um, no sideline return or anything like that. Middle return, um, you know, and, and in regards to it, we, we had a phrase that we used. We called it Malcolm just so that the kids understood that it was a middle return. So you'll see it on my verbiage. So if you have any questions in regards to that, that's just the verbiage that we use for the middle return so that they understood that it was a middle return. Um, I'll go through my PowerPoint now. You might want to see that. So kind of the philosophy, you know, we told, we told our guys, it's a soul takers, aggressive philosophy. Um, we weren't going to transition. You see one unit and safe. We weren't going to transition to have a punt safe team. Um, you know, we didn't want to have to take guys off. You know, we were going to go punt safe. If it was a fourth and two, you know, we, we didn't want to take deep, deep defensive guys and leave them out there because they didn't really know if they came out in a funky formation, how to line up. So we left our, our punt block slash return team out there. Um, for any safe um, opportunities. Um, we would identify a block and a hold up personnel. That, what, that part we did change. Um, if we had certain guys on a block, um, typical long guys to, or, or guys that we felt could block, block the punt better th than other guys on the return unit. So there was some, some personnel changes in regards to that. But other than that, we didn't change personnel. We left whatever was on our pump block return team. That was what's going to be out there. Um, again, the techniques we're, we're going to go through, um, it, again, it's three phases. As you see right here on my screen, there was a holdup. What typically happens occurs at the line of scrimmage while your man is still in protection. You know, we, we, we went back and forth with, you know, do we want to show like we're coming or do we want to just have a square stance? Um, we would change it game to game and, and, and just kind of let the guys do, do what they wanted um, in regards to how they were going to have their stance. Um, we also went back and forth is, you know, are guys looking at the ball or are they looking at, at the, the cover guy, you know, the person who, who's going to go down and cover the ball. Um, again, we went back and forth. We went and studied a few teams and everybody had different opinions on it. So we kind of just basically told our guys is the inside guys, they were going to have – be able to see through the peripheral, the ball being snapped, um, you know, and the outside guys further out away from the ball, um, they were just going to look at their man. And so sometimes you'll see the guys on the video, they were a little bit screwed up here and there. None of them were perfect. But, um, you know, we, we kind of gave them the freedom to, to do that. So, um, again, the first phase of that punt return was the hold up, third at the line of scrimmage while our band was still in protection. Get in your fit, fit in the block pattern. The second part of it was the transition. When your man is transitioning from a blocker to a cover man, and again, these are tools, and I'll go through the video, um, and you'll be able to see all the tools that we kind of gave them so that they can utilize and have in, in, their, in their back pocket, you know, whatever tool they needed to use or they felt they needed to use, they were able to use. We had the post, the slingshot, harassing trail, uh, blind spot, recovery angle, and junction point, pick the wall to the ball. Um, and then the last part was the decision part. There were, that means they were near the return, 
the return man was in the contact zone. Um, if they felt they could get a legal block, which is like a rip by, they could do, or they could sit and fit. Otherwise, they were just going to put their foot in the ground, turn around, and find somebody to block. Um, we often told our returners to make a Peter call. If they felt that our return, our return unit was going to get close, they would tell a Peter call, and that would get everybody to back off, and he was just going to fair catch it and return it. You know, if the punt returner ever felt threatened, like our punt return unit was going to run into him. So, um, again, that was in the decision phase. Block and no block, finish with the proper leverage, or get foot in the ground and look up field. Now I'm going to go through and show you some of the clips. Uh, let's see, how did I do this last time? So this first drill is a, a mirror drill that we worked on with our guys. Um, and we split them up into groups. Obviously, we had a, a lot of man, manpower. Let's see if I can get the why it's not going bigger. There we go. Okay. So this was the, the mirror portion of it. Um, we had two, two punt guys going and two punt return guys going. Uh, let me move this around a little bit. We had the long snapper just standing there snapping the ball. We put a cone just so that they didn't run into each other. We tried to get them to go uh, one direction so that the punt guys wouldn't, wouldn't run into each other. So obviously their stances are, are kind of in a sprinter stance. Um, they're look, looking at, at the punt unit. Um, and what we told them is on the initial part, we were going to just jump and attack, attack them. Our initial was just get our hands on and attack and work to our leverage. So obviously if we wanted to go a middle return, meaning the ball was, let's say on, on the left hash for, for this purpose, we wanted to drive, drive these guys to, to our right. So obviously they'll, they'll move around. You'll see these guys jump around to the left to right. So we kind of gave them a direction to go. And we're just mirroring them. We basically tell them we want to match cleat for cleat. Wherever they're going, we want to match it. Now, as soon as they transition from, from being a, a protection guy, now we want to put our, our offhand on them, on the interior peck or, or the armpit um, is what we, what we kind of wanted to, to get their hands on. The guy here up to, the, to my right, I'm sorry. He's, he's too high. And he doesn't get his hands on them. The guy down here to my left, he's not bad. And again, that's just the, the initial portion of it. This is them not, not being able to jump on them and get their hands on them right away. This is just the mirror portion. And again, we had multiple groups going so that we, we didn't, we can, uh, have more guys going at one time. On the other side of it, we had another group going. So again, we were just matching what we call cleat for cleat and offhand jam. And again, now he's telling them to go to the right. So they'll go a couple times. Again, we want to match cleat for cleat. The guy on the right was too much space. Too much space he's got his eyes in the ground and again i'll go through i'll let it run so you can see it the guy to my right is pretty good he's just too high he doesn't get inside again we had offensive guys and defensive guys going we tried to we tried to match them up with receivers and db so that they could see and understand it with body type got here to the right is a db you can see he does a pretty good job staying low now the next one is is after we did the mirror offhand jam we went to clamp offhand jam which was now now they were working already they already had attacked them and held on they're still going to match cleat for cleat now i would just want to work on driving them 
You want to work that offhand, that opposite arm, driving him just kind of like a DB would on a receiver. He does a bad job of, of staying clamped on. See, as the coach is going there, he's telling him he's got to be clamped on. He's still doing a bad job. His hips, his feet are one way and his hands are the other. But we tell him feet before hands. Doesn't do a good job. Some of these are guys, like I said, they're wide outs. We were just trying to see who can do it the best. This guy's not bad. And again, this was just the initial hold up portion of it. Bad feet right there. This guy's not bad. And again, that, that's just the hold up portion. Now that's what we call clamp offhand jam. Now I'll go over the transitional portion of it, um, some of the tools that we gave them. Coach, I, I've got a question about your camp. Uh, yes, sir. About the clamp there. Do you mix around different techniques for your clamp, or are you always trying to get inside the breastplate, or will you attack triceps or the back of the shoulder pads, or what, what have you guys done in the past? We're, we're telling them always engage in that inside armpit, inside breastplate. That's kind of what our DB coach had emphasized to us and saying, uh, you know, that what, that's what he felt was the best. You know, obviously we used him um, – for, for a lot of that portion of the hold up portion, because, you know, they teach the DBs and they're telling them, you know, the inside breastplate, you know, that's where they wanted to punch, you know, when the receiver was coming off the line. And so that's kind of where we, we grasped that, that portion of it where we said, hey, that's, that's what we're going to do is either put our, our uh, opposite arm on that breastplate and drive them, or if we can get in that armpit, if they, sometimes often you see that the punt team, they want to swim, you know, and, so it's kind of like a receiver when he's getting pressed, he wants to swim. And so we said, if he swims, then obviously you're going to get underneath that armpit and just drive him out. If not, we were going to get into that breastplate and try to drive him out and try to punch that. Great. Thank you. Now, this, this was after he already had gone from a punting. Now he's going into cover. And we call this harassing trail. Um, somebody, some, team, some people call this a post. We call it a harassing trail. And again, you'll see we lined up some cones and we told him to go about 10 yards. And every time he dropped his hips, uh, the punt return team, which is the guy to the left, he's looking. Every time he drops his hips, he's going to punch him on that uh, top of his shoulder, shoulder blade. And every time he sunk his hips, we sunk our hips with him. We wanted to give a, 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 a punch. We wanted to be aggressive with that punch. We wanted to be as violent as we could with that punch. So see, he's kind of robotic. Every time he sinks his hips, he's too high. He wasn't bad towards the end. He's not bad, but I don't want to turn my hips all the way. This young man here, he's actually playing with the Dolphins. He's a running back, uh, number 28 there with the Dolphins. He was our, one of our best special teams guys when I was there, Patrick Laird. So as you can see, when they dip their hips, I'm, I'm punching. I want to be more aggressive than these guys. I want to be violent, violent with my hands. So again, that, that was harassing trail. The other tool that we did was a slingshot. So if they, if, they, if they got us on our leverage from the initial start point, if they got us in, let's say we, we needed to be inside leverage. So if it's a middle return and he beats me inside, I got to be able to get my body back around and, and slingshot my way through. So we told him with that opposite arm, I'm going to grab that hip and swing my way through and wrap around. This guy does a pretty good job minus them tripping up. You don't want them to trip up. Oftentimes in our league, they'll call it holding. He doesn't do a good job. So with my right arm, when he swings inside, I want to grab him by his hip and swing around. He does a pretty good job. 
and use my leverage to my advantage as I'm working the way upfield. He does a pretty good job there, Malik. I want to put that right arm on his hip and wrap around and now maneuver myself into inside leverage. That kid, Evan Weaver, was an All-American uh, last year for Cal. I mean, we had a lot of guys, you know, coach was really good about uh, personnel. I mean, we had guys, one of the guys there, 59, he, he's playing for the uh, Carolina Panthers. 89, Evan Weaver will probably end up getting drafted day two uh, into the draft. Really good player for us. Never, never complained about playing on special teams. Always wanted to be helpful. He doesn't do a good job there. He doesn't get his leverage. He doesn't get his hand on there. Again, he does a pretty good job working his way back into leverage. Now we're telling the punt team to go to the right. And I want to work back inside. Now, once I slingshot myself into there, then I can use my harassing trail or my post and, and start driving them out, you know. Because, again, for us on punt return team, we, we always said, ball me, man. I want to be between the punt team and the ball carrier. That's, that's the best way to do it, you know. And that, that's what we taught them. And we, we ingrained it into their mind. Ball me, man. Same thing we, we told those guys on kickoff return. If I can put myself between the punt team and the ball carrier, that means my guy's not going to make the tackle. So again, that that's the slingshot portion. If I lose leverage, then obviously I got to gain get get my leverage again. And so we we give them that tool of using slingshot. Now, now I'll go through the decision phase. Now we call this restart, run the numbers, okay? The gentleman right here, you see the white jacket, he's the returner. We're, work, we're assuming we're working down the field. That's what we're telling our, our punt team and the punt return team. Um, returner's gonna catch the ball and on the, on, on the return, as soon as he sees the returner catching the ball, now punt team's gonna end up trying to become a tackler. So we wanna stay between the ball carrier and the, the tackler so we say restart, run the numbers. Now, from flipping my hips, I want to drive my inside arm, driving, if I can get to his breastplate, then obviously I'd love to. But if not, obviously drive the armpit to the top of the shoulder pad and drive him out. We call it restart, run the numbers. And you'll see, guys, we're harassing trail. Now he's transitioning, and I want to just drive him out, drive him out. Does a poor job. Coaches in there telling them. Now we're always telling our punt return team, as I get close, I got to peek that returner to see where that ball's at. I don't want to run into the returner. So we tell them to peek between 10 yards to see where that returner is. Because the worst thing you want to do, and oftentimes you see it even at the NFL level, that punt guy, the punt return guy is running into the returner. Excuse me, he does a poor job there. Poor job. He's already behind him, lagging behind him. We don't want to lag behind him. We told him we want, we want to be healed in heel to toe relationship with that punt, punt team. He does an okay job. And again, this is the tool in the decision phase. Obviously, we see we, we got guys that screw up too. The punt guy turns his back to him. We shouldn't turn his back to him. Want to drive out. Okay. So, again, that's another tool in the decision phase or in the uh, decision phase. We start running numbers. Coach, on that restart and run, uh, you, you're going from the uh, harassing trail. Okay. Yep. You're jamming them with your inside arm. And then on the restart, you're switching, uh, in essence, to what is now your new inside arm. But are you emphasizing that – I know you said long arm, but that's a, that's a one-arm block there to avoid holding? Yes, yes. That's just one arm. We just want to be able to drive them out just to buy our time for our returner. Now, we always told our, our return team, if we got 10 yards out of our return, that was a win for us. That was the first down. 
our main goal was to get 10 yards. Any more, anything more than 10 yards was great. So again, like, like you said, is his inside arm is harassing him. Now on the transition, as soon as we transition and we got to drive him out and we, we restart and run our numbers, now we want to go with the inside arm, back to the inside arm. You know, obviously he's switching from his left. Now he's going to go to his right and he wants to drive him out. Again, this was just another tool. Um, and we gave our guys, like I said, multiple tools um, so that, you know, they, they can have in, in, the, in their bank and, and they could use it. Now, th this one we call sit and fit. If they could transition, let's say he lost, he lost him in phase. You know, now, now uh, we tell him if, if he can get within 10 yards and sit him up like he is here, the trash can here is the returner. As you can see down here at the bottom, he's, that's the returner. If he can sit him up, we want it to have our left hand uh, be out on his outside arm, and then our right hand was going to get the inside of his breastplate and drive him out. Again, just another, another tool to buy a returner some time for him to be able to catch the ball. Now, obviously, I want to get my, my hat placement inside. I don't want to be behind him because that's oftentimes they'll call holding. So to my left is the punt, punt return guy. To my right is the punt team. I don't want to chop my feet. I, want, I literally want to sit, get in and sit down just like this guy did, except you he, he want to be a little lower than that. He's too high. He's got his both arm. He's got one arm on the back. This guy's not bad. We call this sit and fit. And then we work the other way. Bad hat placement. He's not bad, except he's too high. You're gonna have to, he's gonna have to drive him. So you understand that punt team's coming down full speed. So again, that that's another tool in the decision phase. That's the sit and fit. And then this was the rip by. If I couldn't sit and fit, if I couldn't do anything at all else, I'm going to rip by. So to the right is the punt return guy. To the left is the punt team. He's going to try and get down there. This should be a full sprint. Try to get down there to tag off on the returner. The returner is the trash can. If I, can't get, if I can't get into the sit and fit or I can't get in to block him, okay, we tell him to rip, rip by, just run straight across his face. And now if you notice a lot of teams, even in the NFL, um, I did an internship this last year. Now with the O-line is oftentimes when they'd have a screen or something, they, there's no more blockbacks. They're all illegal now. Now they're teaching these guys is just almost a rip by just to kind of block them back like, like basketball, um, like a screen. And so that's what we told these guys is one of the tools is just to rip by through them, you know, just to delay them from getting to the returner, just to give the returner enough time to, to catch the ball and get some yards upfield. Guys, we're late. You can see we have a few numb nuts too. And see, it buys them a little time for that returner just to catch the ball. And then I don't have film to this, but I'll explain it to you on this. So on this portion, we did block, no block. If I couldn't get to him, and let's say my punt guy was already to the returner. Let's say he already had beat me. He had, he, I could see the back of his numbers. We told our punt guy we were going to stop, put our foot in the ground, and turn around and, and find work. And, and we emphasized that a lot for the, for the main reason that we didn't want guys shoving guys in the back if they couldn't get to their guy or, or if their guy, got, uh, their guy beat him on, on the transition part. We called it block, no block. And all he, he would do is when they would get to this point, let's say like right there, Okay, he can't get to there. We know if this guy was on a full sprint, that punt guy, he was going to get there. So we tell this guy, plant his foot, and we put a, 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 guy, a coach with a, uh, a shield, and we come around and, and work on emphasizing blocking him to teach the block, no block. And again, that was another part of this decision phase of the punt return unit. Uh, and it was a good tool. 
Um, I don't think the year we were there or that I was there, we had any blocks in the backs. And again, we emphasize that a lot is worst case scenario, find work, let the returner catch the ball. Even if you get to yard, it's better than getting a penalty. And, and now we've got to go back because to us, um, it was almost like a turnover uh, to our punt return team if we got a penalty. And that's how we explained them. Same thing on the kickoff return. If we got a penalty for a holding or block below the waist or anything like that, you know, it, it, it was drastic. Because um, we, we did a, a graph on field position. And all we really wanted to do is catch the ball as a return team. If we can get 10 yards, great. If we couldn't, if we can get five yards, great. Um, but the last thing we wanted is the penalty on that. So, again, th that's the last piece of the uh, decision portion. And I'll show you a few clips of some of the tools um, and how, how we utilize them. And you'll be able to see. Uh, let me actually let me go back. Um, the last thing we did is we did a two on two. It says three on three. It's labeled wrong. It's two on two. And we basically now we put like barriers there. As you can see the, the step overs. Those were like the barriers. Now we got two punt return guys. We got two punt guys. We have a coach who's going to throw the ball. We have a returner down the field, and now, hey, it's use the tools, punt return, punt, punt return team trying to hold them off and get a return. Punt team's trying to get down there and uh, tag off on the returner. So you see the guys? Ball snapped. Guy on the left, hands are high. But, again, we're just trying to teach them tools, get them down there, get the returner. Returner's trying to tag off. And, again, this is a dual – kind of a dual uh, – concept we could use for punt team and punt return team. We had a coach. We, you could use a jug machine if you could. We couldn't get our jug machine to get the ball right. So he's working on driving. He's got to stay on him. He actually loses that battle if you look at it. Oh, there's three views. New group. Guy on the left loses battle. Number 23 actually does a good job maintaining them, holding them on. And again, time equals distance. So the longer I can hold them up, the longer I can work with them, the less time he gets down there, he can get down there to get to the ball. We get a great dual service drill for the punt and punt return team. 23 does a good job. You got to stay on them. But he does a good job. Ball me, man. Again, that, that's what we told those guys, and we emphasize that a lot. Ball me, man, just like on kickoff return. Now, I'll show you some, some of the clips of, of uh, how they were used dur during the season. Pass this one. Okay, right here, this guy does a good job of clamping. I'll show you when I go to the tight. Eighty-nine, right here to my left. He does a good job. He, he clamps on, and he takes the guy for a ride. Again, this was an all-conference, all-American linebacker for them. And again, he does a good job of staying between the ball carrier and the punt guy. And the rest of the guys don't. But again, you know. You can see that the tools are coming in hand. Here's another one. Let's go to the tight. Twenty-eight does a pretty good job. Thirty-four. He. He's okay. He just gets wound up a little bit. Here's one of the slingshot. I'll go to the tight. This guy right here to the left, you can see 
He gets beat initially. Now the guy wants to work back. He knows where the ball's going to be punted. He does a good job of slingshotting his way back in. Now he, what he doesn't want to do is he doesn't want to do that. What he should do from this point is take a better angle and cut him off. Takes a bad angle there and tries to shoot his wad. But again, as you can see, the guys are understanding the tools that we're teaching them. I go to the tight again. Here's har harassing trail right here over post 23. Does a good job. He's a long guy. He's holding him off. He does a pretty good job. And again, Washington was a, was a team for us that we played in our conference that they did multiple formations. Again, that's why we didn't change personnel. We didn't do anything um, in regards to the punt. We had a different hold-up team. Some people asked before if we had a hold-up team and a block team. No, because if they came out in a funky formation like this, you know, our punt return team knew who was eligible, who wasn't. You know, if something came out funny, they were going to call automatic uh, safe, you know, just to get guys back off. Go to the next one. So I'll show you on this one. This guy right here, if you can see my mouse, he does a good job. He loses his guy, block, no block now. He lost his guy. Now he's going to just go find work, find somebody. Obviously, he doesn't block anybody, but runs into guys. But in their mind, they knew block, no block. Does a pretty good job holding him up. He does a pretty good job harassing him. Now he doesn't need to pull him. Good return by our return team. I think we ended up third this year when I was at Cal in uh, return. This one's sit and fit, you'll see on the, on the tight copy. Now, one thing we struggled th this year is with our returner. Sometimes he'd get gun shy and let that ball go. And obviously it's lost yards. Now, right here, you're gonna see sit and fit. See, he, he's understanding he can't get to him. He doesn't feel like he can use a rip by. He feels like he can use a sit and fit. This gentleman right here. And now he's going to sit and fit him up. And if this guy catches the ball, actually, and doesn't let it drop, we have a pretty good run lane to at least get some, some yards. He lets the ball drop and minus yards. And then on this last one, it'll be a, a rip by. And again, the, ki the kids were, were fired up about all the tools um, that we had given them. And we didn't specify, hey, you got to use this tool or that tool. We gave them the tools and, and let them go to work and, and, use, and use the tools. Now, you'll see a rip by here. Number 20 is going to rip by, comes across, does a pretty good job. Now, if the other guys would have done their job, return would have been a lot better. They got all their guys to the right. We have, we sh we have plenty of guys to the left. We just miss a guy. And, this could have been a bigger return. So, again, th th those are the, the three factors that we did, the hold-up, the transition part, and the decision part um, for our, our punt return units. And, again, it, they did a really good job. And, and um, you know, different guys use different tools. You know, the long-arm guys, they did a lot of the harassing trail or posting them up, just driving them. The shorter guys – you know, with the shorter arms, they, most of the time they were using the harassing trail and just trying to bang, bang that shoulder, shoulder blade because they couldn't get their arms in them. Obviously, uh, the longer guys, they, they can hold, hold them off by posting them up. So I'll open it up for questions if you guys have any questions. Yeah, Coach, we got a couple questions here. Um, 
the first one is talking about the, the sit and fit. Mm -hmm. um, did, what do you teach for the direction that you want the, the players to block them to? Are you trying to get all the way around and, and block them back north? Are you washing them out wide? Are you carrying them down? But what, what's the direction once you get the sit and fit? Where do you want to put the player? So if, if – let me see if I can open it up. I'll show you so you can explain it. So for, for our guy here, for the punt return guy, if, if I saw the – your screen again for us, Coach. Oh. You can see it now? Yeah. Okay. So our, our returner here is, is right – literally kind of right behind us. So we were telling our guy, if we were in that position, then we would just want to drive him out, let's say, to our right. We just wanted to basically create a run lane to, to our returner. Now, if I was in a different position and it was switched, then obviously I needed to drive him left. If I was – this guy here was the punt return guy, and then this guy was the punt guy, then I want to drive him left. But we basically told him the direction you're in at that point is basically sink or swim. So here – he knows the returners to his basically left or to his back. Now I'm just going to, I just want to drive him out now at this point to my right. You know, if, if I'm in, stuck in the middle, then I, I'm just going to drive him out to whatever direction I can get best leverage to. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Thank you. Uh, another one here is uh, when do you want the players to release the clamp and get into the trail? As, as soon as I feel like I'm going to get onto a, a hold, like if I'm going to hold them, because um, obviously time equals distance. If I, if I can hold them on forever, like uh, Evan, Evan Weaver did on uh, – let's see if I pull it up. Desktop. We, we basically told him as soon as, as soon as you felt him lose leverage or you lose leverage on him, that's when we were going to turn into the harassing trail portion of it. So I'll go to the tight here on Evan. So here he's, he's clamping on. Now, as soon as I feel like, okay, I lost him now, I'm losing them. He's, I'm losing hands on him. I don't have inside leverage anymore. I don't have my hands inside. Now I can go on and start to harass him. And obviously the young man has long arms as well. And so Evan now has him beat though, because he has that opposite arm clamped underneath that armpit. This guy tries to put his, his inside arm over Evan and Evan already has, has him beat because he has that hand underneath that armpit. There's nowhere for him to go. As you can see, he rides him out all the way until that punt our punt returner fair catches it. I mean, he still ha has them in control. So as soon as I feel that, that I'm going I'm to hold on to him or, or he, I'm losing leverage on him, then that's when I want to release. Any other ones? Yeah, I've got one more here. And coaches, uh, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat there, either publicly or, or directly to me. Um, but uh, Coach Ravillas, how do you teach to avoid uh, the club over at the top of the rip by? What do you mean? Uh, what do you mean on the rip by? Like them trying to club over the top? Yeah, the cover guy trying to club over the top of the rip by. We didn't really have that problem because if you if you look at it, that guy is coming full speed. The one thing that we did have, uh, or I wouldn't say we had a problem with, is guys kind of felt that our guy was going to do the rip by is they would kind of pump the brakes and let our guy run past them. But we felt that any type, if he was going to try to club that arm over or do anything, it was still going to slow his momentum down from being able to get to the returner. So we didn't really have that, that problem um, of him trying to club over on, on the rip by because it, it initially went so fast. 
um, that our, our rip by would come across. And if he stopped his feet at any moment, then that, that was a win for us. Our return was going to be able to catch the ball and take off. Okay, perfect. Thank you, coach. Any other ones? I think that's it, right? Yeah, I'm just taking one last look here. Yep, I, that's it for questions. Um, so again, uh, great to connect with you again. Thanks for the information on the uh, three phases of pump return. Really appreciate it. Um, coaches, if uh, you want to get on that YouTube page, subscribe and share it and share it with your staff uh, so we can all get better together. Use that as a resource. That's fantastic. Uh, next week, uh, coming up, we're going two days again. So it'll be Tuesday and Thursday. So Tuesday, the 28th, uh, we'll be uh, having Angus Reed, former longtime BC Lion, author of the Thank You Coach, written uh, about Dan, his relationship with uh, Dan Durazio, who was on here earlier. He'll be on Tuesday. And then Wednesday uh, out of Manitoba, John Mackey is coming back and he's going to be talking post-snap reads uh, with the quarterback. So that'll be Tuesday and Thursday next week. Uh, so once again, Coach Ravellas, great job tonight. Thank you very much. Let me give, give you guys my cell phone number in case you guys have any questions. Um, you know, you can always ask. I have kick, kickoff, kickoff return stuff. Um, you know, whatever I can share with you guys, I, I'm, I'm open. You know, there ain't no secrets here. Um, we could, like Coach said, it, it, we connected and we've kind of stayed in contact. And, you know, when he reached out, I, 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 I was all about it. You know, I'm all about helping anybody. Um, that's the only way we're all going to get better. Nobody invented any of this. We got this from um, a coach at Montana State, the actual head coach, Je uh, Coach Choate. He does a heck of a job. He was a special teams coordinator at Washington for a long time and did a really good job. So, like I said, if I can share this with you guys or you guys have any questions in regards to any of the other special team unit, um, I'll give you my cell phone number. You guys can write it down and shoot me a text, and I'll be glad to help. Uh, I'll shoot it to you. It's 909. Two seven five one nine five six. Again, it's nine zero nine two seven five one nine five six. Again, I appreciate you guys having me, and I hope you guys are safe. And um, again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks again, Coach. Thank you. Have a good night.